It's time for the Fred Jackson Show with running back Fred Jackson and co-host Bob Koshinsky. Brought to you by Duville College, educating for life, and Gate Circle Wine and Liquor. Now from the WBBZ TV studio at the Eastern Hills Mall, welcome Fred Jackson and co-host Bob Koshinsky. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Fred Jackson Show. And of course, the star of the show, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Fred Jackson. <laughs> we got a great show. Our special guest tonight, quarterback Jeff Toole, is in the house with us tonight. And if you'd like to send us a question or a comment to the Fred Jackson Show at WBBZ on Twitter, Brad Gelber standing by to take your questions, relay them to us. And we also have the Lackawanna Steelers in the house tonight as our special high school football team. So let's care for Lackawanna. <coughs> All right, Fred, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, you, watch, you watch a team like Kansas City come in here undefeated. Uh, big bad Chiefs. Physically, the Bills dominated that football team, and except for a couple miscues, uh, the game goes to, you know, instead of going to the Bills, it goes to Kansas City. I know it's another frustrating Monday. Oh, very frustrating. You know, uh, it, I was talking about it earlier today. This, that might have been one of the most uh, uh, heartbreaking losses I think we've had in a long time. To be able to go out and do everything we wanted to do on offense, to have our defense play as well as they did and uh, still find a way to lose that game, you know, burns, you know, and uh, I, I think it, it's going to motivate guys, you know, uh, anytime you lose like that, you want to be able to shake back uh, and uh, try and get this thing right. So uh, I know guys in that locker room will be motivated and uh, will continue to come to work. Uh, talk a little bit about the success offensively this team had running the football. I mean, that was uh, other than the Baltimore uh, performance, the most outstanding performance this year uh, by you, CJ, and uh, Choice. I mean, you guys really had a strong day. Yeah, and, and it's one of those things that we, we pride ourselves on as an offensive unit. Our offensive line did a tremendous job. Anytime that you, you run for 240 yards, um, I mean, you're going to have – tremendous blocking by your offensive line and uh, they did that they got us on the safety untouched you know a number of times uh, and our receivers did a great job blocking downfield but uh, some of the things that Kansas City did you know defensively we wanted to take advantage of on the offensive side of the ball by running and uh, when they put uh, you know Eric Berry down in the box as a linebacker we want to be able to run against that and we had some some, some, some success doing that yesterday and um, you know, it was something we wanted to do, take some of the pressure off a tool, and uh, we were able to do that, and we did it with will, at, at will whenever we wanted to, and we just didn't get a win. Now, Fred, you and I have had this conversation before. You're on my fantasy football <laughs> team. I was playing for first place yesterday. So <laughs> you guys are running up and down the football field. Yeah. You get down to the two-yard line, so what happened? Uh, I didn't get the job done again. You now, know? <laughs> you say that, and I know you're a good guy, and you're going to say that, but obviously teams are getting penetration in that situation, but it's only in that situation. Yeah, and, you know, I said this earlier. You know, goal line is, is the, the hardest place on the field to run just because, you know, defenses are built to stop you running on the goal line. Uh, with you get, when you get big guys in there, you know, uh, they're, they're going to get penetration. And that's what kills, you know, uh, running the ball on the goal line is penetration. And, you know, they did a tremendous job. They, they uh, did everything that they could, you know, and uh, they won that battle. And that's something that we as an offensive unit, myself, you know, in particular, have to be uh, particularly motivated about. And, you know, so we, we can't come up short when we get down there again. And uh, that's something that I'm going to take to heart, and hopefully our offensive line does as well. Why don't you use a fullback in that situation? Oh, uh, we did. You know, uh, the first play we called, we uh, we had Frank in there. And, uh, you know, again, he cleaned up some penetration. So, you know, I lost him on the guy he was supposed to block because he was blocking somebody else. So, uh, again, you know, something that we have to be, you know, highly motivated as an offensive unit when we get out there and something we have to be able to take advantage of. We're going to bring Jeff out here in a minute. Uh, he's, you know, obviously a, he seems like a great guy. He was put in a very tough situation yesterday. We'll talk about the one mistake that he made. But I tell you, he came into that game 
Everything considered, he played a tremendous football game. Yeah, you know, uh, and uh, guys like Jeff, I, I have a, a, a tremendous a tremendous amount of love and respect for because he's like me, you know, a guy that's not supposed to be here. You know, and uh, he puts in the work just like everybody else. You know, he's been preparing like he was going to be a, a, a starter since he's got here. You know, and uh, anytime you get a guy like that, that that wants to play and wants to be the guy that, that goes out and helps you win football games, it's going to be uh, a, a guy that can compete with you. You know, and he did that. He stepped up, you know, knew what he was doing. Uh, he was in the playbook, so he knew what defenses he was going to get, and he was able to make some great throws for us yesterday. And, uh, you know, I was happy for him because it, 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 he, he put in the work, and I was happy to see what some of the results that he got on Sunday. It was announced today that E.J. Manuel has been cleared by the doctors. Doesn't mean he's a guarantee to start Sunday against Pittsburgh, but now you know he's going to practice. So mm -hmm. it looks like this team is getting closer and closer to having the roster that they had picked at the end of training mm -hmm. camp to put, that, put out on the football field. Yeah, you know, and uh, that, that's one of those things that, that can definitely help us. You know, anytime you get a guy back like EJ, he's going to be another weapon for us on offense. You know, not only throwing the ball, he can move around in the pocket with his feet and create uh, plays with us by, uh, you know, getting out of the pocket. So, you know, we're excited about hearing that news, and, you know, hopefully he can come back and, uh, and continue to help us win. I'm guessing after two knee injuries or Coach Marone's going to tell EJ, don't run the ball too much downfield. Yeah, I'm hoping he'll learn that himself. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, some things you learn as a rookie, and that's one of the things I'm hoping he picks up on. Okay, now last week uh, we had the show, it was Halloween week, and uh, you went to the Bills Halloween party. We have a picture we're going to show everybody. You couldn't tell us fr on Monday last week who you're going to be, so explain to us what we're looking at here. We are the Croods. The Croods. Yeah. yeah, it's a great movie. you got to watch it. If you guys haven't seen The Croods, be sure to go out and watch it. Great family movie. Uh, and we had the perfect guy be Guy, which is Aaron Williams. And Guy runs around in the movie with his shirt off, and Aaron couldn't wait to do that. So. Yeah, well, he looks good with his shirt <laughs> off. Uh, now, why don't you introduce everybody or ex explain who we're looking okay, at? Okay, that's my wife, my, my kids, um, and my mother-in-law, who actually made all the, the uh, costumes from hand, you know, from scratch. So she did a tremendous job for us, uh, and she, she, got the, she nailed all the looks that we needed to get down, and she did, a, like I said, a tremendous job for us. And I have to admit, I've never seen the movie because my kids are all grown, yeah. but obviously the crudes run around with their, st with their tongues sticking out of their mouth. All the time. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, th again, that's why my daughter played the role so well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to come back. Jeff Toole will be our special guest right after this on The Fred Jackson Show. <laughs> hey, folks, if you think you've got the face to be part of the WBBZ TV talent search, this Saturday the 9th, noon to 3, right out here at the Eastern Hills Mall, we'll be doing tryouts for new faces for WBBZ TV. You could show up in commercials or shows or uh, programs or what have you, or you know, you could show up at Fred's house for Halloween or whatever the case may be. But that's the great WBBZ TV talent search this Saturday. And welcome back to the Fred Jackson Show. Our special guest right now, quarterback Jeff Toole. All right, Jeff, let's get it right out of the way. Third down, what happens at the goal line? You can give us the explanation. You want me to give you the explanation, the real explanation? The real explanation. Oh, no, there's nothing. There's no tricks, no, nothing fancy. I mean, I got to see it. I got to see the throw. Um, you can make any excuse in the world, point fingers, but I'm not going to sit here and do that. I mean, uh, bottom line, I got to take care of the football, finish with a kick. So who are you throwing the ball to? It was to TJ Graham on a slant okay. behind, yeah. But Johnson's guy got left behind and just happened to be, be yeah, in the right I mean, spot at the right time. Exactly. I mean, Stevie actually juke the guy so bad he actually stumbled into the into the interception if you will but uh um it was just a bang bang play and like i said just got to take care of the football down there now you ran all the way downfield hoping to try to make a tackle but mm -hmm. you just you couldn't get close enough yeah i'm not gonna i mean coach was really harping on me about take care of myself and we're already down in the depth chart with qb so i wasn't <laughs> gonna try to take on one of their linebackers here and do something stupid i mean make something well, worse you know who the catastrophe quarterback is Oh, he's known. Trust me. Uh, yeah. I oh, him, uh, yeah. I'm, he tells me. I, every I've week, known. I say, don't you come off that field for it. I mean, you have a broken leg. If you yeah. can stand up, you're staying in the game. So. <laughs> uh, he knows that. Yep. Um, but, you know, looking at you yesterday, you know, I, I said this earlier, you know, guys like you that, that aren't supposed to be here, you know, that have to work 
Um, you know, I'm always happy to see those type of guys. What is the number one thing that you can take away from your first start in the NFL? You know, honestly, I think that it's just uh, it's just football. I mean, growing up, you, you look at, I don't care if you're in Pop Warner, you look at high school players like they're gods. When I mean, you're in high school, you get college players like they're gods. When you're in college, you look at NFL like it's, it's something bigger than it is. And once you get out there and play, it's just ball. It's just football like it is at any age. And uh, I think high school guys can take that whatever level they take their ball to. It's just, it's just football out there. You know, you've, had, you've definitely had an interesting rookie year so far. I mean, you, you know, you're unsigned, you join the team, you start to get attention, and so much so that the coaches didn't want to risk uh, putting you on a practice squad because they didn't want somebody else having seen you play in preseason scoop you up. So now you get thrown into the, into the fire against the Browns. Tough, you didn't have any reps that week, short week. You get the start this week. You know, you had a miscue down at the goal line, but you had an outstanding game. I mean, you, there were six drops during that game. I mean, you're statistically and offensively, you would have had more yards. Uh, it was just one of those things. But I, I got to believe, you know, the future is going to be very bright for Jeff Toole because everybody else around the league is watching what you're doing, you know, coming into the league as a first year. I mean, am I right, Fred? Uh, you know, I agree 100%. You know, uh, you, you look at a guy like Toole and, you know, the way he works, you know, guys like us get to see what he does behind the scenes. Uh, he, he's got a tremendous future, you know, a tremendous upside, a guy that can continue to get better. And, you know, with the right coaching, you know, he's a guy that's going to stick around for a long time and, you know, become a household name. You know, if, you know, tool time, it, it's already tool time. So around Buffalo, he's well known. And, you know, a guy like that, you know, we can rally behind and, uh, and, and play for. We may have to change to Jeff time because I think tool time has been taken. Yeah, I think right. you might have comedian that. somewhere from back in the day <laughs> took that took that uh, phrase. But Jeff, uh, you know, I know, first of all, we've got the hot shot challenge yeah. outside yeah. looming. You know, Fred's undefeated. So we're waiting for that because a lot of people here have already said mm -hmm. this is the week that Fred goes down. Yeah, it's taking not a quarterback. Fred says no. no. Uh, but um, we the one thing I want to talk about is the fact that you, you know, you had a, you had a start in the NFL. This week, if VJ comes back, whatever, how is this going to change your preparation this week? Is it going to be exactly the same? How are you going to go into Wednesday? I mean, other than just getting first team reps, nothing. Um, I mean, previously when Thad was going, I really took away something when I came in Cleveland and I really changed uh, a little bit of my preparation and, and I started taking my reps like game reps. And, and you can't, for me, I learned that you can't take your practice, your practice reps and your game reps uh, at a different speed. You need to take it full speed. And, and uh, that's all I'm going to continue to do. Whether um, I'm running the, the scout team, I'm going to play it like it's a game and, and just continue to, to try to get better in, in any way I can. It looks like, you know, we've watched three different starters this year and each one of you may have a preference as far as receivers or somebody you're comfortable with. Yesterday, you brought Robert Woods back in the offense. He hadn't been in it the last mm -hmm. couple of weeks. Um, do you, is there certain receivers you maybe click with better? You know, it's honestly no. I think all our receivers are, are phenomenal. I mean, that's just, that's just for me watching film and in the film room and saying, I mean, the laser, look at Robert, he's open. I mean, that guy runs his routes as hard as anybody I've ever seen. And he is constantly working to try to get open and he's going to fight for the ball. And, um, you know, Coach Hackett was, was kind of busting on Thad about, what, you don't, you don't like Robert? And, and uh, he kind of got on me a little bit during the week of practice. I was like, you know what, I'm going to feed Robert. Then he's not going to say that to me. And, yeah. and Robert made plays for me. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you, you can see that there's definitely a comfort level, you know, with, uh, you know, seeing that some of the reps that you and Rob got at uh, uh, practice and training camp. Um, he, he expects the ball to come to him. You know, some of the ways he ran his routes, you can see that uh, you guys were very comfortable with each other. Brad Gelber is standing by with some questions from the throngs of viewers who are out there at home. Brad, what do we have? Yeah, the, uh, the first one's from Stevie B633, and it's for Jeff. He wants to know, uh, when you graduated from college, he's sure it was your goal, but did you expect to land on an NFL roster, let alone start a game in your rookie year? Uh, well, sadly, I haven't graduated yet. Um, <laughs> going back this next semester, I got three classes I got to take care of, so... Um, but no, I mean, just like this, this, the whole process of, you know, you hope you get drafted and, and you don't and it's a letdown and then you get, you know, you get some calls and I end up in Buffalo and, and you, just, you just go to work and, and just try to do the best you can. And you just don't worry about the things that are out of your control and, and that's all I did. And, and uh, you never know where God can take you and, and that's where I'm here now. 
I think Jeff's going to be big man on campus when he goes back there for those three classes <laughs> coming out of the NFL. What do you got, Brad? Yep, this one's from uh, Lindsay NM7, and it's for Fred. She wants to know, after your struggle and multiple attempts for a touchdown, what was your main focus, personal goal for the rest of the game? Uh, just continue to go play. You know, uh, you, you want to make plays whenever you get that opportunity to. And uh, we, I didn't make a play, you know, on the goal line. And uh, I think, you know, that just motivated me to just continue to go out there and work hard and, you know, try and break tackles and get in the end zone any way that I could. And, uh, like I said, you know, that, that, that stuff I take personal, you know, and uh, not being able to get in just in. And that, I, I feel like I cost us seven points because uh, the coach gave me the ball twice and I didn't get it in the end zone. Next, Brad. Yep, this one's from uh, Art Ham 716 and uh, it's for Jeff. He said, who was your favorite quarterback growing up and do you model your style of play after anyone? Oh, man. Uh, I was a big Dan Marino and John Elway fan growing up just because my parents both were. And um, I just liked the way they played, just gunslingers and, and uh, obviously some of the best to ever play the game. And I mean, as far as modeling my game after anybody, I honestly don't. I mean, I think every quarterback is unique and is each in, in, in every way. So it, it's tough to really try to play like someone because uh, we're all so different. Okay, you better loosen that arm up because the Hot Shot Challenge mm -hmm. is coming up I'm next. ready. Fred, you ready? I'm, I was born ready. <laughs> He's so gung-ho. We're going to take a break. We'll come back. Hot Shot Challenge on the Fred Jackson Show right after this. Members of our studio audience receive a gift certificate and compete for prizes from Dave & Buster's. Watch the games, play the games at the Eastern Hills Mall. And Poster Art, Buffalo's only poster and t-shirt gift gallery. Featuring the Fred X t-shirt, also at the Easter Mills Mall. Okay, welcome back. Fred Jackson Show. It's time for the Hot Shot Challenge, the part of the show that Fred looks forward to. We've got a couple players from Lackawanna, and uh, this is Joe. Joe, position you play? Uh, running back. Running back. What year are you? Uh, senior. Senior. Okay, and this is Dylan. Quarterback. Ooh, so... Dylan, your quarterback, you're going to play with Jeff. Fred, the, the odds are stacked against you. We've got two running backs against two quarterbacks. So, Dylan, you're first. You can stand right, right on this line right there. Okay? Oh, fun. Okay, you're up, Joe. Come on, Joe. You can put your team ahead here. Oh, well, he threw that like a running back. Jeff, you're up. Jeff Toole, oh, well, Fred Jackson, his unbeaten streak on the line. Here he goes, and he throws it in. Fred Jackson, ladies and gentlemen. All right, you know what, guys? Joe and Dylan, we're going to let you get another sh shot. Get, go grab the balls. We're going to let you get another shot because we've got a couple seconds here. We want to give you a chance to say you made one on the Fred Jackson show. Maybe Fred's going to play goalie in there. I'm not sure. Go ahead, Dylan. You're up. Oh, Dylan got it. All right, Joe. It's for bragging rights. Let's see. Ah, uh, well, the quarterback won, and you're going to get. Oh, guys, you're throwing footballs. It's getting a little out of, out of control here. It's time to wrap it up. Bob Kaczynski is going to throw it back inside. We'll be back to wrap up the Fred Jackson Show right after this. If you'd like to be in our audience for the Fred Jackson Show, just reserve your seat by visiting WBBZ.TV and click on the tickets icon and you can reserve a seat to be a guest. Now, tomorrow on All Sports Western New York, which you can watch Tuesday nights at 7.30, my special guest will be Jeremy White, one of the two morning hosts on WGR 550. And it's time to wrap up the Fred Jackson Show. And for those who watched uh, the, or listened to the Doug Marone post-game news conference, he said he was so frustrated he wasn't even going to go home and pet his dog. And there's his dog, Dog Marone. Well, I'm going to take care of him. You know, you take care of him? Yeah, I got this. You like the collar? We spared no expense with that duct tape collar we put on it. It looks pretty expensive. Yeah. I need well, to get one of these for my dog. <laughs> Jeff, you're playing the – we've got the Lackawanna Steelers. Mm -hmm. Next uh, Sunday it's the Pittsburgh Steelers. What kind of challenge does that present for this offensive team? 
Uh, you know, obviously with their uh, their defense, they have some some playmakers and some veteran guys out there. So um, just got to study them up and get a good game plan going. I think we'll be fine. Okay, they're wrapping us up. We'll see you next week on the Fred Jackson Show. Until then, have yourselves a great night. Much better tomorrow.